All right, welcome back to the channel. Warhammer Man back in the studio, and today we're going to take a look at some more of our Chaos Rules to Come. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, and some Horus Heresy content. Every day we put out at least one video, a reaction, review, new news, painting, modeling, or conversion tutorial. Make sure to check out those playlists and subscribe. Let's jump right in. Make the galaxy tremble with the power of an ancient traitor legion. Although the ancient legions of the Chaos Space Marines aren't often distinguished by their narrow-minded Imperial detractors, in truth, they couldn't be more different. The splintering legions are all awful in their own unique ways, and millennia spent fighting for naught but with whims of the thirsting gods have only intensified their predilection for particular patterns of pugilism. Okay, great. So, I don't know. Maybe someone can explain what those words mean to me. Because I'm not familiar with those. <laughs> uh, the upcoming Codex Chaos Space Marines has given Traitor Legions its own tools to stand out amongst the rabble. Including the Legion trait, stratagems, Warlord trait, relics, and even secondary objectives to help you choose which of these raucous warbands you'll ride to battle with. We're talk taking a look at some of their standout options. Very cool picture right here. You see some Black Legion facing off against the Ultramarines. Pretty awesome. The terrain looks great in the back, too. Uh, so, Black Legion. Although their colleagues might not agree, the Black Legion are the foremost power amongst the forces of chaos. Their leader, Abaddon the Despoiler, demands nothing short of excellence from his fanatical Black Crusaders. Ceaselessly drilling them with the devastating spear tip assaults that earn their former Legion top dog status during the Emperor's own Great Crusade. Uh, so, the Legion trait for Black Crusaders. Obviously, the Black Legion trait. Each time a combat attrition test is taken for a unit with this trait, you can ignore any and all modifiers to that combat attrition test. Uh, so that's not bad. That's not bad. Each time a model with this trait makes an attack, add one to the attack's hit roll if uh, bullet point one, the attack is ranged attack and the target was the closest eligible enemy unit, the attacking model, when the unit was selected to shoot. And then second bullet point the attack is a melee attack and the attacking models unit made a charge move this turn so they're plus one to charge i'm sorry plus one uh to hit on the charge they're plus one to hit when shooting at the closest eligible enemy target and then they ignore combat attrition tests so that's pretty good that's pretty good i mean in the right situations you know you're gonna be hitting on twos so that's gonna make your shooting pretty potent as long as it's at the closest target and then it's going to make your combat you know hit real hard on the initial charge so uh, pretty good overall word bearers as you might expect from the guys who started the whole fall to chaos trend the word bearers are experts at channeling warp entities the most strong-willed or foolishly naive of their kind can even rent out their own body to a powerful demonic forces in an exalted possession gaining unnatural strength at the cost of maybe becoming a fleshy marionette for eternity. So the Warlord trait, Exalted Possession for the uh, Word Bearers. The Warlord gains the Demon and Demonkin keywords, if it doesn't already have them. The Warlord has a 4-up invulnerable save against ranged attacks. Add 1 to the Strength, Attacks, and Wound characteristic of this Warlord. Add 2 to the Move characteristic of this Warlord. Alright, so as far as Warlord traits go, um, this is pretty good. You can basically fill a gap on somebody that doesn't have an invulnerable save and also, you know, really buff them up. So obviously you don't want to put this on somebody who doesn't, who already has an invulnerable save because it's a little redundant. I mean, you could in certain situations, but you know, you want to get the most out of it. You want to pick a model that does not have an invulnerable save already. That being said... Plus one strength, plus one attack, and plus one wound is very good. So, you know, your typical just base strength model is going to go to five and then be wounding on threes. Uh, that's really good. You know, and if you're using something that's giving you, you know, if you have five strength naturally or seven strength naturally, you know, this is going to put you over a break point to wound, you know, toughness three or toughness four models respectively. So that is pretty good. That is pretty good. 
Uh, and then obviously you have your weapon modifiers and everything in there as well. And then as far as movement goes, adding to the movement is great. Especially if you're doing it on somebody that already has augmented movement characteristic. So, you know, a jump infantry model that is suddenly plus two movement, plus one strength attacks and wounds, and has a four up and vulnerable save, uh, pretty good. Obviously, in most cases, you know, there's going to be positives and negatives to having the demon keyword. Positives are you're probably going to be able to use some cool strats or other items from the codex. Uh, negative being that there is a lot of stuff uh, that specifically hurts demons. So uh, cool to see the warlord trait. I would have rather seen like the faction trait, honestly, but uh, for all of them. Uh, Night Lords, taking the example of their fallen Primarch, the Night Lords love nothing more than to creep into position before throwing a surprise party for their victims. This year's gift, an outrageously bloody assault. While in Midnight Clad, these bat-eared terrors can use the shadows to weave between curtains of incoming fire despite being eight foot supermen uh, so we have a stratagem for them so night lord stratagem use this stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase when a night lord's infantry unit exuding cultists is selected as a target of a ranged attack until the end of the phase each time a ranged attack is made against that unit subtract one from the attacks hit roll okay so i mean it's like lightning reflexes i mean it's definitely good Obviously, minus wanting uh, your opponent to hit you is obviously good. Especially if you have a key target they're going to be going after. So that is nice. Um, nice to have. Iron Warriors next. Undisputed champions of breaking nice things. The Iron Warriors prize destruction of a more calculated sort than the Warp crack, warp Rack Cousins. These masters of demolition are a dab hand at drawing up mid-battle plans. For dismantling all kinds of vital infrastructure. Are a dab hand. That, I don't know what that means. They're a dab hand. At drawing up mid-battle plans. Yeah, I have no idea what that means. All I can picture is like people dabbing. Uh, trust the former. Uh, fifth legion. Uh, sorry, fourth legion. To find out. Find a route to victory. Through the ruin of the enemy's works. Uh, so secondary objective for them interesting uh, so this is a secondary for the iron warriors shadow operations end game objective if you select this objective during the resolve pre-battle ability step of the mission your opponent must set up three objective markers anywhere on the battlefield that is on ground level not within nine inches of each other and not within six inches of any battlefield edge these objective markers cannot be set up on terrain features with the unstable position terrain trait and no more than one of them can be set up within six inches of your opponent's deployment zone. If it is impossible to set up an objective marker, it is not set up. Each represents a demolition site, but does not count as an objective marker for any other rules purposes other than this objective. Iron Warriors infantry units from your army can attempt the following action. Alright, interesting. So you basically take this objective, your opponent has to set up three marks on the battlefield, can't but they be within six inches of an edge, can't be within nine inches of each other and they can't be set up within six inches of your opponent's deployment zone so they can't put them too close to their deployment zone they have to be pretty much like in no no man's land um so okay and then you can perform this action with infantry total demolition action one iron warriors infantry unit excluding character units from your army can start to perform this action at the start of your movement phase if it is in range of a demolition site objective marker and no enemy units are in range of that objective marker, excluding aircraft. This action is completed at the end of the turn, provided the unit performing it is still in range of the same objective marker. If completed, that objective marker is said to have been demolished by your army and is removed from the battlefield. Okay, so you're performing the action at the beginning of your movement phase, and then it's lasting until the end of your turn, so you basically can't do anything with this unit. At the end of the battle, score four victory points for each demolition site objective marker that was demolished by your army. Score an additional three victory points if a demolition site objective marker that was within six inches of your opponent's deployment zone was destroyed by your army. Okay, that... Did we miss something there? About the extra... So you score 12 just by demol demolishing the three sites, but it says score an additional three victory points 
if a demolition site objective marker that was within six inches of your opponent's deployment zone was demolished by your army. But doesn't it say right here, these objective markers cannot be set up on terrain features with the unstable position terrain trait and no more than one of them. Oh, I missed that part. Sorry. And no more than one of them can be set up within six inches of your opponent's deployment zone. So your opponent right off the bat can deny you three victory points on this objective by just not setting any of them up within six inches of their deployment zone. That's interesting. Huh. Okay. So interesting. I don't know. I Anytime you take a secondary or even a primary whatever anytime you have an objective that your opponent can deny you points right off the bat that doesn't seem like a good idea to take just because right off the bat you know the max you're going to get on this is 12 because your opponent's just going to deny you three points by not putting it within six inches of the deployment zone you know unless obviously they're forced to etc so uh, alpha legion where many of the traitor legions are screaming Berserkers or chanting demagogues, the Alpha Legion are subtle manipulators par excellence. Their battles are carefully planned, full of traps and schemes, and the help of the Hydra's will, a sorcerer's jamming gadget sneaky enough to put Phobos skill teams to shame. They can shut down any enemy's command structure. Okay, so just one more thing before we talk about that Alpha Legion thing. Another thing that's interesting about this is at the end of what was the last part of it yeah so at the iron warriors infantry units can perform the following action one iron warrior infantry unit excluding characters from your army can start to perform this action at the start of your movement phase so you have to move to the objective in one turn then once you're on the objective, you have to stay there. At the end of the turn, you have to end up at this objective. Then your opponent gets a whole turn to try to kill you. And then you can perform this action at the beginning of your turn. And by, at the end of the turn, it's completed. So this is actually fairly difficult. You have to basically move up to this spot. And then you have to hold on this spot your entire opponent's turn. And then at the beginning of your turn, you can perform the objective. So that actually is like not that good of an objective. Or a secondary rather. Uh, so anyway, Relic, Hydra's Whale. So this is a Relic for the uh, Alpha Legion. Obviously Hydra. Uh, so once per battle, after your opponent uses a stratagem, excluding command reroll, the bearer can use this Relic. If it does so until the end of the battle, the CP cost your opponent must pay to use that stratagem, stratagem again is increased by one. So this is pretty good. It's a once per battle thing. If your opponent, obviously you can't use it on command reroll, but if your opponent has a stratagem that they use like every single turn, like say you're playing against Tyranids or something and they're going to be using overrun a lot or, you know, whatever, whatever the stratagem is that they might be playing like every single turn. Uh, you know, Marines going, um, could be strong, could be strong. I like this. Now, here's the thing though. You know, now that you have to pay for every single relic and every single warlord trait, you're paying one right off the bat just to kind of like curse this stratagem. And then if they use it again, they pay one. So you're out of command point right off the bat, but you stop them from using that stratagem. And then if they actually choose to use that stratagem, then you're even command points again. So the only way you really go up on this is if your opponent uses a strat another two times because they use it the first time. Then you use the relic and nothing happens yet. They use it the second time. You've each paid one extra command point now. And then when they use it the third time, now you've paid one command point for the relic. They've paid one command point for the second turn, one command point for the third turn now. So you're now up one command point on the third use of that stratagem. You know, it's still okay on the second use, but arguably you're trading one command point for one of their command points. So you're basically just draining both you guys of one CP minimum um, if they use it. So again, it's good, but it's not amazing. 
the the main time I think this would be relevant is if you have somebody that's using the same strategy literally every turn. And realistically, based on that example, you know they have to use it three, four, or five times in the game uh, before it's really relevant. So it's okay. None of these are. I mean, they really should have showed off a little more consistency. So uh, Emperor's Children, the Emperor's Children, on the other hand, are all about being seen. The sinister sensationalists are true maestros of the art of combat, each a dark reflection of their Primarch's obsessive perfectionism. And while their skills are immaculate, the unbound arrogance of their great champions can get them in serious trouble. As you're ready to gamble for the greatness. Are you ready to gamble for the greatness? Uh, Warlord trait, unbound arrogance uh, for the Emperor's children. Each time a Warlord is selected to successfully choose a number from 1 to 3 on a d6. We suggest turning a d6 to show the number, but concealing it behind your hand. Then reveal your choices simultaneously. If the chosen number is different than the unit that fight, then until that fight is resolved, add the number you choose to the attack characteristic of the Warlord. Okay, so they had something like this previously. So you basically pick a number between 1 and 3. Your opponent picks a number between 1 and 3. And then if they're the same... If they're the same, nothing happens. If they're different, then until the fight is resolved, add the number you chose to the attack's characteristic of your warlord. So naturally, if you have this, you're going to pick three because you want three attacks. And then your opponent's going to say, well, I'm going to pick three also because I know you're going to pick three, and then you don't get any attacks. So then naturally, you know, then psychology kicks in, and you say, well, I'll just pick two then, and then your opponent will pick three, and then you'll get plus two attacks because they're different. So then your opponent might anticipate that as well. So then maybe you do pick three and then your opponent picks two, assuming that you're not going to pick three and get greedy and you'll also pick two and then you end up with three attacks. And then if you just want one free attack all the time, you can just pick one because you know probably your opponent's never going to pick one. They're always going to pick either two or three. So is this good? Uh, unbound arrogance warlord trait? No, it's terrible. It's terrible. I mean, even if it was just straight two attacks all the time, uh, I'm not sure it's that good. The Death Guard and Thousand Sons already have special codexes of their own. Must be the Primarch model privilege. But wherever could the World Eaters be? If you were following last month's Warhammer Fest online, you have seen that Korn's favorite Lumberjacks have their own book coming. And while Index Hereticus rules to tide you over are featured in this month's issue of White Dwarf. Man, their grammar is so bad. Have their own book, comma, while Index Hereticus rules tied you over are featured in this month's issue of White Dwarf. Ugh. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool picture right there. Some sisters facing off. These legions aren't the only sub-factions you'll find in the Codex Space Marines. Uh, so, you know, honestly, I don't expect them to like show off all the best stuff. But, I mean, let's be real here. You know, this Warlord trait is mediocre at best. This Warlord trait is okay. The secondary objective is okay. Uh, this stratagem is pretty good. I mean, it's a good stratagem for sure on every army that has it. So, you know, I'm sure it will be good on Night Lords as well. And then the Warlord trait... Uh, this could be pretty good for the word bearers. There's definitely some potential for this. Definitely some potential. Uh, to be able to give an invulnerable save to someone. And then also some really nice stacked abilities as well. I mean strength, attacks, and wounds. That's pretty beast. So you're definitely going to make a beat stick out of whoever you choose that for. That's probably the best one. And then the Black Legion uh, trait. I mean they have like basically like a leadership buff or like anti-attrition um, buff. And then plus one to hit. You know, if you play the situation right in shooting and melee, you know, on the charge or if you're shooting the closest target. Um, it's okay. You know, it's pretty pretty mediocre, honestly. So, uh, overall, not a ton here. I wouldn't get too down on Chaos right now thinking that they're not going to get anything good. It just doesn't really seem like they chose the best stuff to show off, to tell you the truth. Uh, the Legion trait is okay. You know, this is probably the best thing on here is this Warlord trait. 
and then you know this is it's a cool strategy to have obviously uh, it's not like unique or crazy or anything but it's definitely good for durability uh, it's a nice nice thing to have um, and then as far as the secondary again okay I mean I don't I don't like the idea of taking a secondary that you can't max because you're immediately putting your opponent at an advantage uh, you know if they have potential out of 100 and you have potential out of 97 uh, I don't I don't really like that um, and then for the Alpha Legion it's okay I don't know these these are rather underwhelming to tell you the truth so probably just have to kind of hang tight on this one we should see some more stuff in the near future um, and hopefully some better stuff that guy looks pretty cool right there um, so we'll see you know as we get more and more spoilers uh, hopefully they will get like a little more powerful uh, I'm sure that chaos is going to be good we've seen consistent codex creep throughout this edition and overall you know it's kind of like balanced out pretty decent so I would imagine that chaos is going to get some pretty awesome stuff in this book I just think they've chosen not to show it to us so uh, let me know what you think am I overlooking something are one of these things particularly good and uh, I seem to be missing it uh, do they all kind of suck um, are you looking forward to you know army-wide abilities are you going to be playing chaos you're going to be playing against chaos so you have to study up on the enemy always like to hear back from you guys i appreciate all the kind words all the support and uh, interactions all the new subscribers and uh, for all of you that are watching right now that have not subscribed yet uh, if you enjoy warhammer 40,000, kill team necromonda age of sigmar warcry even some horus heresy if you're into reactions reviews and news videos like this every single day if you like painting modeling conversion tutorials make sure to check out the playlist as well uh, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there so uh, like and subscribe warhammer man studios i'm warhammer man and i'm out of here